to take a quick break from the Crossroads videos, and because the third part is going to be a fairly short one, let's take a quick detour. A detour to one of the best preserved shipwrecks in the world, as we look at USS Lexington, CV-2. The sister ship to Saratoga, and a wreck that is, in some ways, better preserved due to her being far deeper beneath the surface. I was initially looking at covering all three South Pacific fleet carriers, Lexington, Hornet, and Wasp, in one video. However, in the process of writing that script, Lexington was, on her own, approaching the length of one of my usual scripts. So instead of summarizing things, I decided it was better to do a video dedicated to Lexington all on her own. An experiment, as much as anything, in covering a single wreck in much greater detail. Let's see how much interest this one gets as we get into the meat of the video. Before we move forward, though, I will note something at the start. While Lexington is better preserved than her sister in certain areas, this isn't true of her hull in its entirety. She happens to be the fleet carrier wreck in the worst overall condition, as she suffered terrible internal explosions, both before and after slipping beneath the waves. While sinking upright and in one piece, a lady to the end as it was described, Lexington ended up splitting into three major pieces after vanishing from sight. This makes her wreck a bit more difficult to survey compared to the other two, as limited time on an expedition has to be split between multiple pieces of her hull. Something made more difficult as she rests 3,000 meters, 9,800 feet beneath the waves. Not the deepest by any means, but still quite a deep wreck. Even so, we have some interesting images to see of her, courtesy of Paul Allen's expeditions in the late 2010s. In this specific case, Lady Lex was found on March 4th, 2018, by RV Petrol. This makes her the last major shipwreck found in Paul Allen's lifetime, as he passed away on October 15th, 2018. As for the wreck of Lexington, while admittedly in pieces, she does show similar levels of preservation to other deep-sea American shipwrecks. Her paint remains visible in places, and her gun still points skyward, where they had last been engaging Japanese attackers. This is something that isn't unusual for these deep-water wrecks, but still worth noting. Another thing worth noting is one of the most notable discoveries on the wreck itself, that being her nameplate. This still remains in place on her extreme stern, legible and clearly visible. While there was never any real doubt the wreck was, at her scale and location, Lexington, finding that nameplate was still an important moment. Interestingly, the area around the nameplate is also remarkable in its preservation. The portholes are still intact, there is a ladder leading up to the flight deck that hasn't fallen away, and a hatch leading inside is visible. Beneath the nameplate, however, there is far more visible damage to be seen. That said, even with that damage, her stern is still visibly her stern, which is more than can be said for Saratoga at this point. This is one of the areas where Lex's preservation is better than her sister's, battle damage obviously aside. It hasn't collapsed in on itself in quite the same way. There is one other thing I want to note, though, before I move on to other parts of the wreck. One of the quirks of the Lexington wreck is the prominent presence of the quad 1.1 inch cannon mount. The Chicago piano mounts were common on early war American warships, but were never quite satisfactory in service and were removed for 20mm cannon and the ever famous 40mm Bofors as soon as possible. Lexington was sunk early enough in the war that she still had the 1.1 inch weapons and they're visible on her wreck today. Another thing I'll note before I move on is that a lot of this is going to be split between sections of the hull in detail. We've already looked at the stern a bit, and that's just one major piece of the wreck. The other two substantial pieces are the main hull and the bow. The bow and stern rest fairly close to each other, with the main hull resting further away on its own. Her bridge, meanwhile, has split off and is part of the debris field, as I'll get into later, as the fourth major piece, if you want to look at it that way. With that out of the way, let's move to her main hull. 
While the largest section of her hull by a fair metric, this is also one of the rougher areas. As one could expect, when both the bow and stern were torn clean off, along with the island. Considering the latter, it should be little surprise that her famous smokestack is also gone, leaving only its base remaining. This is where another difference between Lexington and Saratoga comes into the picture. Not in the missing stack itself, but in the area around it. Saratoga survived long enough to have her old 8-inch mounts replaced by dual 5-inch mounts, of which two remain on her wreck at Bikini. Lexington also had her cruiser guns pulled off, but she went off to Coral Sea before the 5-inch mounts were ready to be put aboard. Instead, she had her 8-inch guns replaced by the aforementioned Chicago pianos in the pre-existing mounting points. You can still see these on the wreck even now. They're covered in what seems similar to the rusticles on Titanic's wreck, though the blue paint beneath them remains intact and visible. Well, some of them are still in place anyway. One of the mounts is missing, and another is dismounted and slumped against its gun shield. That said, the interesting level of preservation continues here. You can see instructions painted on the splinter shields, though they have understandably faded away. That this is visible at all after the fires that tore through Lexington and her decades underwater is something of a miracle. Moving along, though, we can also see some of her 20mm gun mounts. These are still in place, with gun shields and all, and are another difference between her and Saratoga. When Lexington went down, these guns were new and some of the best that could be put aboard a ship. When Saratoga was expended at Crossroads, the 20mm guns, while still present, had largely been replaced by 40mm Bofors mounts as kamikazes typically plowed right through the smaller 20mm weapons fire. The last area to look at on her main section is where the bow tore loose. This is a torn and twisted mess, though the area where a torpedo hit is still visible. That she broke right where the torpedo hit, more or less, does strongly imply that the break is directly related to that hit, battle damage. Although it is probable that this is where one of the reported underwater detonations took place, in addition to the torpedo damage. Most likely the fires, that would have kept burning internally until water reached them, set off bomb and ammunition storage in the area. This would have increased the already existing damage from the fuel explosions that had doomed damage control efforts earlier in her sinking. All of this damage, put together, would have been more than enough to tear any ship apart. That Lexington is as well-preserved as she is can be considered impressive in its own right. Not many ships that suffer explosions severe enough to blow them into multiple pieces end up in anything resembling good shape. That being said, the final, major piece of her wreck doesn't really have much to look at, because when it comes to the bow section, there are very few released pictures. We know, from what Petrol shared, that it rests well away from the main portion of the wreck and on its side. The extreme forward end is still recognizable due to the unique shape of a Lexington-class carrier, even when it is resting on its side. The wood planking on Lex's flight deck is also still fairly intact. I will say it is, admittedly, downright bizarre to see another of the quad 1.1-inch mounts pointing straight up towards the surface and not because it was aiming up, but because the hull beneath it is so heavily tilted. Unfortunately, though, that's about where we run out of stuff on her bow, so let's look at the last piece of her hull that is broken away from anything else. I mentioned earlier that her island was torn off and is resting in the debris field. This is, in particular, very heavily damaged. It is difficult to pick out details in the pictures that have been released. About the most easily recognizable part is the top of the tripod mast, though the rest of the bridge structure is still recognizable by the remnants of windows, if nothing else. Other parts of the debris field include one of her boilers, a 20mm cannon mount with ammunition box nearby, and one of the more famous pictures of her wreck in a blast shield with the information plate intact and legible. Of those pieces, the most interesting is probably the boiler. You don't often see boilers from military ships on the bottom, compared to something like Titanic. 
and Lex's triple drum boilers are a visually distinct design in a lot of ways when you get down to it. Not a common sight these days, by any stretch of the imagination. That aside, as interesting as those pieces are, the arguably most interesting piece of the ship in the debris is the antenna for her radar set. That this is still intact is a miracle, especially considering the shape of her island. As we come to the end of the video, though, it is pertinent to note that the best preserved parts aren't actually the ship herself. In the debris field around Lexington's wreckage, several aircraft rest in place. Dauntlesses, Devastators, and a lone Wildcat. Some of these planes are, as you could expect, something of a mess. But some of them are incredibly well preserved, to the point that their paint remains as vibrant as the day they last flew. Roundels and numbers remain clearly visible on the Devastators as an example. Ironically enough, considering Lexington's violent end, and how long these planes have been underwater, they're the best preserved examples of this particular aircraft in the world. Oh, don't get me wrong, they're certainly damaged, often with the engine rusted away and various parts of the fuselage broken away, or with snapped wings, or any number of other things wrong with them. But considering the complete and total lack of any devastators in museums, this is still something worth looking at. As for the Wildcat, while not quite as well preserved, you can still see both kill marks and the Felix the Cat squadron insignia. It apparently belonged to one Noel Gaylor and was abandoned when the Lexington began to sink, where it would, eventually, end up under the waves and better preserved than some wildcats found on islands. These planes are in such good condition, damage from the sinking aside, that there's a proposal floating around to raise them for a museum. While I would love to see these aircraft in person, especially the TBDs, that is not terribly likely. The Navy would have to be involved, and they are so very deep that it would require incredibly specialized equipment to pull them out of the water, quite ignoring the whole war grave thing for the moment. Now, to finish off looking at the debris field, here we have a torpedo. Not just any torpedo. This is apparently a Mark 15. That is, a destroyer torpedo which means that this is most likely one of the torpedoes fired upon Lexington to scuttle her that failed to detonate as many American torpedoes did in the early war. That makes this a rare piece of history in a lot of ways. It also, however, rounds off this look at Lexington's wreck. While torn into multiple pieces, some in better shape than others, the overall condition of the wreck is amazing. Maybe not quite as good as Hornet or Wasp when we get down to it, but she's certainly in better shape than a lot of wrecks out there. Battle and explosion damage aside, naturally. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.